Hi there, welcome to I Have Today with Diane Forster. This is our weekly series where we inspire, educate, and empower you through life's transitions to reinvent yourself. And each week on this show, I bring on the coolest, most amazing, awesome CEOs, authors, influencers, experts, and life changers who have gone through their own journeys, through their own reinventions, and come out on the other side successful. And they come on this show to share their stories with us to help you through life's transitions. And today is a very, very, very special day for a few reasons. First of all, we're in our new studio, so it's a celebration. And, and I stunning. Oh, thank you. And so I beautiful. am so happy to have in the studio, in the new studio, my first guest, my friend, my mentor, Allison Maslin. And we have such an exciting show planned for you. And some days it's a water drinking show. Some days it's a wine drinking show. And some days it's a champagne drinking yes. show. Yes. Because we are here, cheers, a little <laughs> sip. Hmm? We are here to talk to Allison about her new book, Scale or Fail, that is coming out next week. And with her st story, her journey, and what we do here at I Have Today, this is going to be such a great topic. So we pick a theme every week, and our theme this week is how to grow and scale your business. And Allison is an expert, 10 times business owner. Let me read you a little bit of her bio and tell you a little bit about her. She is the CEO of Pinnacle Global Network. It is the number one and is the number one best-selling author of Blast Off. And her newest book, Scale or Fail, which is about to launch on October 16th, it's been endorsed by Damon John and Barbara Cochran of Shark Tank fame, among many other experts and leaders. You've built 10 successful companies starting at the age of 19 years old. Fascinating. Her client list included Ben & Jerry's, Supercuts, Merrill Lynch, Charlotte Russe, and Supercuts. Um, Allison founded Pinnacle Global Network, which is her mastermind coaching business community that I am actually a part of. I am in my third year entering my fourth year in this fantastic community of dozens and dozens and dozens of entrepreneurs with amazing mentors. You've built an unbelievable team around this, and this business is just growing by leaps and bounds and continues to expand and evolve each and every year. It's amazing. Um, Allison founded in 2010 to pay it forward and help business owners to scale their businesses and companies to reach their dreams. Pinnacle has since become the world leader in scaling businesses. So exciting. You've been featured on In Success, Inc., Fortune, and Forbes magazines. You're a regular contributor to Entrepreneur Magazine and a featured expert at ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, CNN, and all across the USA. You also host your own weekly series, which you've been doing for many years, called Ally and You, The Business Success and Lifestyle Show. So, welcome to the show, Allison. Oh, I am so excited <laughs> to be on your show. I'm so excited. I've been to watching your show oh. and I'm so impressed. Thank and, you. uh, you know, you are a force to be reckoned with, Diane, and the work that you do in the world. So I'm honored to be here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Well, likewise, I feel the same way. And I, I, I mean, and I really feel like I, you lead by example. You are one of the most authentic, hardworking, heart-centered um, leaders and contributors to the world. Um, and you've built something that is so unique and so different and so special. And I'm honored to be a part of it. Really. Oh, well, yeah. it has been so fun to yeah. be on this journey with you now almost four years. So right, to right. be able to, that's the most rewarding thing, especially when you're in a business of helping people, which you are, mm -hmm. to be able to see where they started and where they are. So yes, fun. yes, yes. You, you've navigated me through some, some peaks and valleys. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah. It's always an adventure. Yes, yes. All right, so I, I want us to, the way we structure this, the, I told you the theme, we have an intention for the show as well, and the intention is I have today to create a business and a life that I I love, and you've certainly done that so far. And um, I want, there's, I mean, there's so many questions. There's so many things that I want to talk to you about, about this book, Scale or Fail. The first thing I want to say to everyone, which is so important, is this is the first and only book written about scaling a business that's been written by a woman. So you, uh, you're a legendary, you know, this is wow. amazing. So thank you. Well, it's time. Mm -hmm. And the book is for men. It's not just for women, but it's, um, you know, the books that are out there about scaling, which are phenomenal books that are that are on the market. But it's definitely a more male perspective. And um, yeah, I'm I'm really happy with it. I think for women as well, they need to see the opportunity and the potential to grow a much bigger enterprise. I think in general, uh, we as human beings think way too small. Yes. And so scaling a business, you know, there's growth and then there's scale. And right. that's where it really, that's, you know, where, it really that's where it really takes, takes off. off. Right. Yeah. Right. So, all right. So uh, I'm, I'm just going to ask you a series of questions because I have so many, and I know that the viewers and the listeners want to know this too. So you built 10 businesses that you scaled 10. Uh, I mean, I want to talk about the success, but I want to talk about the fails because this is something that entrepreneurs, business owners are, fear so much is they have the fear of failure. So I, I think it's important for you to share some of the fails. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Well, I think first of all, it's the attitude towards failure. I don't have a fear of failure. Mm. So I think it's really a perspective of how you look at it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have things that don't work out on a daily basis. Right. You know? yeah. I mean, that's just life, right? right? And I don't I don't look at it as a fail. I look at it as that we're in research and development and we're trying to figure it out. Right. Right. So it, it, there's a choice point. And um, when I when I jump into a new venture, mm -hmm. I make a decision that it's going to succeed. Yeah. No matter what. So okay. that's the first one. And that's what you do with mm -hmm. I have today. Right. So mm -hmm. I make that decision that it is going to work. Um, but I have definitely hit some pretty hard walls in my early uh, business that I started. Um, I was 19 years old. I was doing poems and greeting cards um, started with for individuals and then I was doing it for companies like MCI and Merrill Lynch and so forth. And they, they, well, Allison, we, we love your greeting cards, but do you do other things? You know, do you do brochures? And then, it, you know, turned into television commercials, radio commercials and PR. And I really had zero idea how to do any of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I, I learned from my dad and, and he just said, look, if you think it's worthwhile, just say yes and then figure it out. Mm -hmm. Just do it. Mm -hmm. And um, and so that's what I did. And I built this company, this full service ad agency by the time I was 25 mm -hmm. and it was successful. I was making money, but I was miserable. And so I didn't know how to scale a business. I didn't understand the logistics of a business. I didn't understand how to delegate. I had some employees, but I was a control freak. I felt like I had to do it all. And trying to manage growing a company, my daughter was really young there then, and um, I just literally fell apart. Right. And, uh, you know, I think the universe was looking at me saying, we're going to like, uh, we're going to make you fall apart right. so that we're going to knock finally, you down. Yeah. Yeah. And that is exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. And I had a bad car accident and, uh, and that was it. I was like, okay, I am not living like this. Yeah. I love business. I want to shape my own de destiny. I want to help people, but there's gotta be a better way. Right. And so, you know, I, I, Taken 35 years yes. working through all kinds of kinks and building these companies, you learn a lot. 
and from the amazing mentors that I have had. Yes. And um, and so I built this scale blueprint. I built a blueprint for business growth and business scale. Yes. Yes. And that's what this book is all about. Okay. So why do so many business owners stay stuck in this at the same level in the same place for so so many years? What what happens there? Well, I mean, for those of you that are watching right now, and if you have a business, I mean, think about when you started your business. You have a certain mindset of why you start a business, right? You want to have your own passion. You want to have freedom. But we tend to get into business and we're pretty scrappy. Mm -hmm. You know, we're just trying to make ends meet kind of thing. And so when you have this sort of survival mindset where you have the same mindset that you're trying to use to scale your business at this level when you were here, you're not going to be able to take those big leaps, you right. know, because you're holding on too tightly. Right. Um, or using the same marketing, using the same uh, operations mm -hmm. and really like being a control freak. Right. You know, right. and instead of really looking at how can I step back yes. and work on the business instead of in the business. Mm -hmm. And so they choke their growth. Even Diane, some people can be doing this for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Right, right. And stay at the same place. Right. And I've only been an entrepreneur for, uh, you know, three years, about three years now. And I worked in corporate for 32 years. So it has been a, you know, major mindset shift for me. And while I have the roll up my sleeves, just go and how hard can this be? And let's just try it and figure it out as, as I go. And one of the things you say is build a plane as you're flying it. Yeah. I'm, I'm famous and notorious for that. I notice myself feeling like stuck and, and getting into those habits of, you know, doing things the same way and I'm getting the same results. So you're right. It's stepping out of it and being able to do that and, re and letting go, mm -hmm. which, which we're going to talk about uh, further. Um, but I will say the reason people do that, Diane, is because they're afraid things are going to fall apart. Yes. If you've worked so hard, so it's understandable. You, you do micromanage your, your, your team because, oh my God, what if they make a mistake, right, right. you know, or if I do take this big risk and, uh, you know, and I take on this big venture or do this new product, what would happen if it doesn't work out? And so you end up staying, playing it safe right. and you miss out on all these opportunities. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I, I, I think it's, it's so important. And um, I want to talk about uh, more here, but let's talk about the, um, the, the coaching community and how important that is to have support and not struggle with doing it alone. You know? Yeah. Being a business owner, it can be very isolating. Mm -hmm. And there's this idea, I mean, I think human beings in general, feel like asking for help is a sign of weakness. Yes. And like, I should know this, mm -hmm. but why, if you haven't done it before, how are you going to know it? Right. And I know the way I like to operate is I want to get to the goal, like in the shortest distance, I could go here or I could kind of go like this for years. Right. And by working with a mentor that's been there and done that, it's going to, it's like a geo force getting you there much faster. But the community, like, they get you. They speak the same entrepreneurial language. Right. And so you understand it. It's like you can relax. Oh, you know, there, there's no judgment. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been in the trenches and they lift one another up and you learn from them. What strategies are they applying that's working for their beauty salon or tire company or engineering company that can, you know, those same strategies, believe it or not, you just tweak them 45 degrees and they can work for your business. Yes, it's so true. And you don't have to surround yourself in the same community with people in the same industry. It's actually better to be exposed to other industries. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So, so for our audience, what is the definition of scale? I mean, what does that mean? Right. I think that um, most people think of the scale as something that uh, we hate. <laughs> the bathroom, right? <laughs> that, that, that we avoid love, like the play. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so scaling really just means uh, multiplying and duplicating. So it's like you get to a certain level in your business. So let's say you're a financial planner or even um, 
a chiropractor or something like that. And, mm -hmm. and your, your dollars, your hours for, for dollars. So once you get to a certain level, there's only so many hours in the day. Mm -hmm. You can only see so many clients right. and you're probably maxed out. You go on vacation. You're not making any money. You go to sleep. You're not making any money. And, you know, your expenses are up and up. So it's scaling means finding a way to duplicate you and to duplicate your revenue stream so that they multiply rather quickly and more uh, and, and they go deeper and they are recurring. Mm -hmm. right? right. And but your expenses are not growing at the level of that you're, you are scaling works. of your your revenue. Okay. So that's where you scale. Okay. All right. That's great. All so right. there are many ways to do that. And mm -hmm. that's, that's what we talk about in the book. Okay. All right. Well, um, let's talk about this because you've been a successful business owner for over three decades, but you also have another special love and uh, an expert in the trapeze. You're a trapeze mm -hmm. artist. I am. So let's talk about that. I love this. And I've seen you personally on the trapeze and you have so, yes i have yeah mm -hmm. and um i'm i'm actually going to be doing a trapeze show at our book launch party All right so, so i'm more nervous about the trapeze show <laughs> than the book launch um so how are the two alike yeah so i've been flying on the trapeze for for 20 years okay and wow. um i work with one of the top well probably the top coach in the world mm -hmm. he's in la uh, Richie Guyona. And so I really believe in surrounding yourself with those experts. And so the trapeze has, you know, when I got into trapeze, it was because I just loved it. I was a gymnast growing up. I was always swinging on the bars. And when I got up there for the first time, I thought, oh my God, I've come home. I'm in heaven. Yes. And so, um, you know, you are, every time you climb that ladder, you're facing your fear. Mm -hmm. You're facing your ceiling. Okay. And so you're constantly working to break through that ceiling to, you know, uh, do another rotation in, in your trick or to have it, um, you know, more graceful or, you know, you want to, I mean, you could fall a hundred times before you catch a certain trick because, right. you know, you're throwing yourself to the catcher. So it's, it's like going after something again and again and again mm -hmm. until you finally break through and it's like that in, in business you have to have that persistence yes and uh, because there's going to be a lot of falls along the way um, there's also you have to let go you too you know too. I mean if you don't let go of the trapeze bar then you just you know really in there you're just <laughs> not getting anywhere. swinging exactly <laughs> so you know it's definitely great there's a lot of great metaphors with the trapeze but I do feel that if you do something scarier in other parts of your life, right? It makes you more courageous in your business life. It does, and it has for me, and it does, and it's also um, speaking to um, the consistency and the persistence of it. And it's not the perfectionism of it. You're just you're you're, you know, you're stretching yourself every time mm -hmm. you're doing that. And it's the same in business too. Oh yeah. yeah, I mean, there's many times I've been up there, and you'll see my leg kind of going like this, you know, <laughs> and shaking. <laughs> Um, or my coach says, you know, you uh, because I'm doing tricks now, you know, out of the safety lines, which, mm -hmm. you know, there's some some pretty crazy stuff. And and he'll say, you know, you can't do this unless you're 100 percent committed. Yes. You have to commit to it 100 mm -hmm. percent because if you don't commit could be, you know, not safe. Yes. And it's like that within business. You can't just sort of go for it. You right. can't just put your foot in the water. No, you have to say, I'm going for this. I'm going to make a success. I'm jumping in with both feet. Mm -hmm. It's true. And, and you know, from your experience and you've been there for me when I've experienced the dips and, you know, when you get knocked down and the breakdowns and how the breakthrough comes from that mm -hmm. dip and that breakdown, and you can't have that growth and that, that, up leveling unless you have that experience and so many people in general this is this this applies to life too mm -hmm. that are so afraid of that and um stay paralyzed and stay stuck and say stay, stay small and it's leaping and letting go of the bars letting go of the mm -hmm. handles and just going for it where 
It's the biggest breakthroughs. It, 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 it is really the biggest is. breakthroughs is when it, <laughs> it hurts more yeah. um, because it, it really wakes you up and, and you say, okay, this isn't working and I need to do it different, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's helped me when I've had those things because it, it forces you to get creative, to go inside, to ask yourself those deeper questions. Mm -hmm. And if things are just, you know, hunky dory all the time and where most people live, most people in society today live in that it's copacetic, things are okay kind of life, yeah. which is fine <laughs> mm -hmm. if that's what you want. But if you really want to propel yourself to uh, live your full potential, yes, what you were born to do in your life, you have to be willing to get uncomfortable and get out of that, you know, that coma, as you say. Yes, yes, that coma life. All right, let's talk about the scale it method, which is your trademark method in the book, mm -hmm. um, which you based it all on. So, so what is it and how can other business owners create their own path to success? So, um, so scaling, it, it's a big mystery for a lot of people. It's like they know how to get started. There's a lot of support for that or, you know, kind of get some traction. But again, most people hit that wall and they don't know how to get to that other side. Mm -hmm. And when you look at um, uh, people like Ali Webb, who we just had at our event, who mm -hmm. is the founder of Dry Bar, right. um, or Kendra Scott, who, you know, is the jewelry, who also has spoken at, at one of my events. You know, they, they've all started and, uh, you know, had bo actually both of them had two failed businesses in the beginning. But they were like Kendra, she mortgaged her house, her credit card. She's like, I am going for it. Yeah. I'm either going to make it happen or forget it. Yeah. And now her company is valued at a billion dollars. Right. So scale is a, it's an acronym for strategic vision, cash flow, alliance of the team, leadership and execution. Okay. So all of those components need to be in uh, in in your scaling process. So strategic vision, you need to know where you're going. Right. And um, if you have people that are unhappy on your team or if you feel frustrated, it's usually because you're not clear on your big vision. Mm -hmm. You need cash flow. Oh, and so yeah. we have a lot of strategies on creating cash flow. I was a single mom for 12 years. I had no help whatsoever in any of my businesses. So you don't have to have someone hand you a big chunk of cash. You can create it. Mm -hmm. um, Alliance of the team, it's got to grow beyond you. Mm -hmm. So in our company and Pinnacle Global Network, we have eight CEO mentors who are just unbelievable. Phenomenal team you've built. They are, they're incredible. Yeah. They, uh, they're, they blow me away all of the time. So, you know, if it was just me, I, I wouldn't, yeah, I can't spread myself that thin and help that many people. Right. And then leadership, you have to learn to step up as a leader. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't think that we're born leaders. I think you have to step into leadership. It's something that you need to learn, be willing to do. Right. And, and I think it's our responsibility as leaders to lift other leaders up mm -hmm. and then execute. Mm -hmm. It's where the right. rubber meets the road. It's that taking that action and making it happen. Mm -hmm. Put that plan to work. Yes. All right. I love that. And um, as someone who is part of this community, you are a systems, processes, worksheet, template, creative way. You, you're very visual and you make it very simple for others to see their, get their vision out and be, have them see it too. And you lay it all out in, in these fantastic, simple ways for us that allow us to step up to it and raise and, and um, well, I think, you know, most of us thought when you think of business when you're younger, oh, it's a real complicated science. Like, and dry. You know, <laughs> and it's like, I personally like simple. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and so I always try to take something complex and drill it down and just make it super easy to comprehend. And I like to have maps 
and and I am very visual. Yes. You know, if you just lecture to me and you don't show me something visual, it kind of goes over my head. Mm -hmm. And so I like to create, you know, checklists and and maps. And and we have, um, I actually have a gift that I'm going to be sharing yes. with your audience today, mm -hmm. which is one of those downloads and trainings. But we have some of those things in the book, to so that you can take this step by step. Yeah. All right. So many business owners have more trouble saying no to things than yes. And explain what that means because I've experienced We're this dying. myself. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> She's talking about me. <laughs> well, you're so creative and you're, you're, you know, like business owners, you're a visionary. Yes. And it's kind of like when you would, when I was younger, I I'm from Oklahoma. Okay. And we would go to first cafeteria and we, there was a woman there and she'd say, happy, you, you know, um, so I, I kind of lost my accent, my accent. But anyway, I wanted everything, yeah. you know, I'm like, I can have the pie. I can have the fried chicken. I have the mashed potato, you know, and then I get in the, like my eyes were bigger than my stomach. And it's the same thing with business owners. Oh, I'm going to do this project and that project. And, and all of a sudden nothing is really getting done. Right. No, you're not really succeeding because mm -hmm. you're not able to dive deep. And, um, and I used to do this and not only would I stress myself out, I'd stress out my team. Mm -hmm. They couldn't keep up with me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it really wasn't, uh, you know, wasn't getting us anywhere. So you really need to get as much off your plate, focus on one or two things a quarter, mm -hmm. one or two projects a quarter. And that's it. Right. You know, and the deeper that you go with that, I mean, we're going into our ninth year in Pinnacle Global Network, yes. you know, I mean, and it's just every year we just, it just grows more and more and we go deeper and we're improving on it all of the time. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's just so much fun. I think, you know, people try things for maybe six months, a year or two, and they're on to the next thing. Yeah. And I think that because this is me, too, you know, again, uh, you know, being an entrepreneur for not that long, but even though, I'm, you know, it's I've got the momentum going now. This is what I learned, too, because I am such a creator that when you drill it down and you do let go of all of that and you focus on it, it's simpler it uh, it's way more productive, way more lucrative, way more sane. And you don't have to do it all. You don't have to get it all done. And so I have a much better idea of a long term vision that, oh, well, I don't need to write that book this year. I can I can write that book in two years. And 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 now I get to serve even more people staying focused in this zone of genius. It's yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, in the early days of business, you're kind of trying to figure out what that what is. Right. You know what I right, mean? Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you do, you just have to stick with it. I think people have that syndrome where I, oh, I'm missing out. You know, yes. mm -hmm. I'm supposed to have the TED talk now. I'm supposed yes. to have the book now. I'm supposed to have the. I'm supposed to have the. Right. And in business, you just you need to create revenue. You got to get some sales. You yes. know, you got to stay focused on track and really build that revenue stream then you can start building the team and doing these other things. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been 10 years. I wrote my book. My first book came out in, in uh, 2009. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know. Yeah. And it's evolved into this amazing global network. Um, okay. Well, uh, so what we do before we get to the gifts. So hang on. Stick around till the very end. Um, I want to share what we do every week is we take what you're doing with the I have today way and talk about three tips, tools, strategies on how you can start really implementing this now. And with our theme of how to grow and scale your business, three tips on how to um, uh, tip. Number one is to get help and surround yourself with support. Do not struggle and do this alone. Right. Oh my gosh. You know, I mean, that's really how the big breakthroughs in science and uh, in technology are it's through collaboration and through support. Yes. And so definitely ask for help, work with people that have been there and done it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're also going to have 
a lot more fun in the process. Yes. Yes. So, because we are supposed to be having fun. We are supposed to be. Yeah. Remember, enjoying is, life. I know. It's kind of the point. If you're not, then something's wrong. Right. Right. And then uh, number two is act as if you're already a success. So mm -hmm. my my big thing with I have today and is focusing on mindset, emotions, and language. So pay attention to your language around how you're speaking about yourself and your business and speak about it as if you're already there because that's, you know, energetically and, and law of attraction wise, how you really catch up with it. And it also works on the subconscious mind to get you there. You want to be in that state, that emotional subconscious um, mental state that you are, you know, serving the lives of millions of people or yeah. whatever it is, you know, yeah. Yeah, that's, um, that's, you know, how I, I, I really feel like with all the strategies that we do, mm -hmm. I mean, we do the Facebook ads, we do webinars, I speak all over. I mean, there's so many things that we do. Yes. We have a big team. I've got 20 employees focused on that intention mm -hmm. as if it's already there. It's what I'm doing in my mind. I've been seeing this for years yes. and watching it unfold is the most powerful strategy that you can do hands down hands down and you and you write about it in the book you write about it when you were uh when you were unhappy in the one business oh no no your homeopathy business where all of a sudden the clientele dried up and you went to the beach and you know just walked away from it all and went to do the creative visualization and then the next day the phone started ringing so yeah this was during the when the economy the, started crashing yes, yes i had all these clients coming in and saying oh my god and they were panicking and and all this and i'm like you know not i'm not taking this in i'm not taking this energy yes. in and then um you know, more people were coming in and all of a sudden I realized my phone had just dried up and usually it was so, it was ringing constantly. And my assistant, Julie, was like, what is going on? I said, I don't know. And so I went to the beach. I visualized because it was a homeopathic practice. We dealt with, dealt with people and their health. I visualized people getting healthy, feeling great, mm -hmm. um, you know, just living a full life. And really feeling that, yes, on a visceral level, the next day the phone started ring, ringing, and Julie goes, "What did you do? Mm -hmm. You did that visualization <laughs> thing, didn't you?" And I'm like, "Yep, yes." And that is how manifestation works because you got into the visualization of it, but the feeling place of it, and mm -hmm. energetically, it just has to show up. It's so powerful. But the thing is, is that to me, it's it's almost deeper. It's like it's such a heart thing. Right. Like I tr like if I if I didn't get busy, then I wouldn't have been able to help people. Right. And I have this big vision for our company as well, because I know that the more people that get this work that's in my book and what we teach in, in Pinnacle and support our clients, that it will change their lives. Mm -hmm. And that's my legacy work. Right. And I'm so passionate about it. Mm -hmm. And so that like if I visualize and I see it, that's the energy that's coming through. Yes, it is. It is. And it's totally in service. It is. And yeah. So you, find that, find that, whatever that is right. and get to that deep place. What kind of impact do you want to make in the world? Mm -hmm. Like start today. Right. Right. Yeah. All right. And the last tip is uh, make decisions from where you are going, not where you are at, which kind of dovetails with the second way. But that is such a powerful thing, too. If you if you make decisions from being stuck in the minutia of the day to day, you are going to stay stuck in the minutia of the day to day. You have to act as if you're already there. Make the decisions that you are this, you know, multi-million dollar company or you're serving, you know, millions of people with your products or services, you're speaking all over the world, affecting lives and inspiring whatever that is for you. So make decisions from there. Make right? decisions from where you're going, not from where you're at. Yeah, yeah it's my one of my favorite quotes. Yeah, it stuck with me over the years. Mm -hmm. Most people do make decisions based on where they're at, what they see. Oh, I can't do it because I can't right. do it because. Right. You have to pretend that you're here already. Mm -hmm. And if you were there, right. what kind of decisions would you make? 
Right. Who would you surround yourself with? Mm -hmm. Right. How do you want to spend your day? Right. You know, so. And I know when I, whenever I have stepped over, stepped off the cliff, it's like that Indiana Jones movie, like the, all of a sudden whoosh, the bridge shows up, you know, you always land. It's always there. It's, it's each following each step you're provided for and it shows up. So, and the universe always out delivers whatever it is that I think I have in my mind. So um, it's being able to make those decisions from that, trusting the process, trusting that the net is going to be there. If you're on the trapeze or the bridge is going to be there and that you're, you're going to be okay. So, and you're such the example of that, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and all your story and what you've been through, mm -hmm. a lot of people would allow that to hold them back and that's why you're such a great torch diane mm -hmm. um and why people love working with you because you know you're an example of someone that has had the trials and tribulations but still makes the decisions from where they're going and that's why you've been able to catapult so quickly right right well thank you and it's because i have support and great leadership around me as well so uh, well, thank you for that. All right. Well, um, I want us to talk about your 17 strategies to scale your company. You um, uh, Can you share two of them? Because I know it's part of your gift that you want to offer to the audience. So I do. I have a, a gift for you all. 17 scale strategies. I won't go over all 17. Yeah. Now you might <laughs> fall over. No. Um, and, and we want you to also, you're going to gift them, but but go in depth in the book with them as well. So make sure we're going to give you a link for the book as well. Right. So. And the book has lots of stories. It's super engaging. Mm -hmm. It's not like reading a textbook. No. So I, cause I know I learned through stories. Yes. Um, but uh, just a couple of the scale strategies. Um, one of them is taking what you do and creating monthly recurring revenue. Mm. So creating a subscription program. So, um, you know, one of my clients I work with has an uh, alarm company. And so even though they have their product in the system of alarms, it's the monthly recurring service of having that alarm system there or a staffing company uh, so this this can apply to any business. If you're saying, well, that wouldn't work for mine. Um, this company is a staffing company and they consolidate information, HR information, so that you pay $49 a month and you are up to date on what is happening in the HR world. You don't have to hire someone to do that research or take the chance that you are, you know, have crossed the line on those regulations. Um, we have clients in the retail world that have created subscription programs for, you know, big box stores and things like that. So that's one way, because if you are ever going to sell your company and you have recurring revenue, the value of your business, it will multiply right. sometimes even five or 10 times. Wow. The value just from doing that, you know, because a buyer likes to know, Oh, I'm buying something that has recurring revenue. Mm -hmm. um, another one is to build a team around what you do. So if you are the financial planner, then you, um, if it's just you giving that advice, there's only so many clients that you can see. Right. I mean, even if you were killing yourself and you saw 10, 12 clients a day, which is absolutely crazy. Right. I mean, multiply that, you, you know, what are you going to see? 50 clients a week. Do the math. There is a ceiling right. and you're, you're going to be stuck in this chair all day, right. you know? So you really need to create a signature program around what you do and train others to, to share that. That's what we've done yes. in Pinnacle Global Network. And, um, and it's just been phenomenal. And so I'm able to help a lot more people. I have more time now yes, uh, than, you know, and I can call you and reach out. Hey, Diane, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. And so forth. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I'm slammed working with just 24 seven with clients, I don't really have time to do that full client care. Right. Right. Well, that's great. And I, I know your strategy. So, all right. So we're going to put a link in the comments section and it's scalerfail.com forward slash I have today gift. gift. Yes. Okay. So that's for the 17 scale strategies. Right. And you get a, um, a download and a video training where I go through all of them. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, a worksheet on that. What an amazing gift. So wherever you are, if you're even thinking about starting a business, you may as well go into this with the mindset that you want to scale it, right? Mm -hmm. My motto, go big or, or don't bother. Uh, <laughs> well, is, you want to set it up that way because otherwise you're going to have to restructure your company once you're at the level to scale. Right. It's like you have to rebuild it. Right. So start with that start in mind from so the beginning. So, so, so smart. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, and now let's talk about your book and how. Uh, um, so it's available. We we can pre-order it now, right? You can get it now. You it can ships get it now. on next week. Yep. So, um, but you know, you'll have it in a few days. Yes. Um, so because of the launch, we have some really amazing gifts mm -hmm. on top of the other one. We have a quick start guide. Um, and that really is like a summary. It's like a resource that you would carry with you, mm -hmm. uh, as you, you know, going through the phases of your company, we have, you know, we have other trainings and things that are, are my gift to you. And that's it. Scalarfail.com forward slash I have today book. book. <laughs> I have today book. Okay. Did you get that scale or fail.com forward slash I have today book. So again, we're going to have a link here for you so you can find it there. All right. So this, I have a question for you, Allison. I ask all my guests. So how do you live the I have today way? Uh, well, um, I, uh, in a few ways, first of all, when I wake up in the morning, um, you know, I had this vision, I had a dream of having a home where there's lots of space. So this, this came to me through the intention, just like what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And so I look out and I have this beautiful view with lots of flowers. And I, before I even get out of bed, I really think about how I want the day to roll out. Mm -hmm. And I think about what I have going on that day and how I want it to, you know, and, and I'm, I take it in and I, I set the intention because I want to have a joyous day. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I really work on being in the moment. I didn't used to do this because mm -hmm. I've, you know, definitely been known to be a workaholic in my life. And I felt like I was speeding past things. Yes. And so now I stop all the time and I just take it in mm -hmm. and I look around and I'm very present. Even when I'm driving, I'm, I mean, I'm paying attention to the road. <laughs> I, I'm not, I used to be just this tunnel, tunnel vision, vision. And people would drive by, they'd go, I waved and you didn't <laughs> see me, you know, because I'm like in my own world. So now I'm really about being in the moment. And even with launching this book, which for a lot of people can be very stressful, I am having a blast. I love that. And I'm so relaxed and I'm really excited about it. So I think it's, it, but it takes consciousness to do that it it's takes a, practice it's a not a natural thing no to say i have today and be in the moment you really have to practice it all I, the time i i well i i say that all the time and and setting the intentions and the affirmations and the mantra meditations and all the work that i do is all about the fact that you know you don't go to the gym once and you know work muscles and expect it to be done your mindset is a muscle too and it has to be worked every single day it doesn't matter who you are that but but being very intentional with your life and your day is so paramount to your level of happiness joy peace of mind fulfillment all of that and you're a living example of it because uh, look at all the success you have in your life and, and love and abundance and community and family. And it's just, uh, I, I really admire you so much and I'm so oh, grateful to be so on this much. journey with thank you. you. Well, yes. it's, it takes persistence. Mm -hmm. So even if you feel like, God, I've been working at this and I thought you have to stay the course Yes. because yes, I may be here, but I'll, I'll tell you, I really like, I was willing to have many of the breakdowns to have to get to the breakthrough. Mm -hmm. So I encourage anybody <laughs> there, just, just stay the course with your dreams and believe it yes. wholeheartedly that it's going to happen. Yes. Well, that's beautiful. Okay. So how can the audience find out more information about you and get in touch with you? Well, my website is uh, allisonmaslin.com. Uh, of course, if you get the book, it has all our information yes. in there as well. You'll learn a lot about me. Mm -hmm. um, if you have direct questions, you can go to support at allisonmaslin.com. We would love to answer any questions that you have. That's wonderful. Well, thank you. And I, 
I'm a big believer, you know, Allison gives out a lot of books. You give out a lot of books and I'm a big believer in this too. When you buy a book and you, you uh, get some value out of it, even if it's only one thing, pay it forward and buy five books for other people. That's what I do too. And, and you're so good about doing it. So um, um, if you, holidays are coming, you know, if you know anyone who's struggling with this, just buy a bunch of copies up front because the, there's nothing better than giving somebody a book. It's, mm -hmm. it's such a gift. It's such a blessing. So, and, and we so have a, a lot of bonuses. So when you get five or you get 10, there's other yes. great gifts that we're giving many of the trainings that I've not shared with anyone except in our pinnacle community. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, mm -hmm. it's uh, a, a, a book is a beautiful gift. It is a beautiful gift. It's a gift that lasts. Well, um, all right, so I want to toast you on the success and uh, congratulations on the book. Just amazing. Scale or fail. Well done. I'm so happy you were the first guest in the new studio. Oh, I'm honored. Thank you. I want to thank you all for being here on the show today. We are nothing without you, and I love your love and support. And if you want to find out more information about me, you can go to dianeforster.com. And we'll see you next time on I Have Today. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.